Hey everybody, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles, and I got a request from um, someone who has been watching my videos here on YouTube, thank you, um, to show you how I made this larger gratitude journal. So I've got a video up already um, where I added some pockets and kind of showed it to you guys, um, but... This um, and nice lady said that she's new to junk journaling and would like to see how I actually made the journal itself. So we're going to do that together today. Um, and then I'm also going to chat and talk about some things on my mind and things like that as we go. So I hope you guys enjoy. This journal is made with my um, fall gratitude kit. And I'm going to show you what I did. I printed, there are 15 pages designs it's actually not true there's 18 but there are 15 that have some sort of tree on them okay and then there are three different what I consider kind of backing pages with lines those are very similar but they're different um, and then this one that doesn't have any of the blue on it um, in the full kit that you can purchase on Etsy you also get when you purchase that kit you've got to you know download everything to see see everything but pages this size so you can make what I'm calling the pocket size or the mini journal okay the freebie that is available that coordinates with this kit is this page of um, affirmations or, or nice words okay uh, there was a little bit of confusion about that, and I apologize. The freebie is not the mini journal kit. It's this sheet of affirmations. When you purchase the full kit, you get everything, multiple size, two different sizes, that kind of thing. So just to clear that up, but we are going to be using the pages that are the large size. All right? And so I printed the 15 pages that have trees uh, on... Uh, it's like a 20 pound weight, just copy paper, because I think it's a nice weight. The journal doesn't get too, too thick, you know, just from the paper. And, but it's a nice weight and you can, I, I don't know if you can tell, the, this is a very muted kit. That was done intentionally because I love these colors and I kind of like that muted effect and I like seeing the lines underneath to, if I want to, to help guide some writing. So... That was all intentional. And they're all just a little bit different, but similar color palette. So I printed all 15, and then I ran them back through my printer. And since there are 15 pages and five of these, I, I did the five each of the three different patterns. And I realized I don't want these when we get ready to turn this into our signature to all be clumped together. I could have done this part off camera. I'm just gonna kind of mix them up a little bit. Um, so if you wanna make a journal this size, I printed them borderless on eight and a half by 11 paper. And you can, if you don't pick borderless, they'll just be a white, um, just a white margin around the edge, sort of like well, it won't be as big as this, but sort of like this, and you can just cut that off. And you can then adjust the measurements to work if, if you don't print yours borderless. Like I said, I liked mine borderless. And so the pages themselves are eight and a half by 11. Let's see, I'm gonna have to double check my things upside down. The cover is made from a piece of scrapbook paper that I cut to measure nine by 12, and then I just folded it in half. So the finished journal is nine inches by six inches, nine by six. And it's just the one signature. We're just gonna sew in all of the pages together. So really, easy basic and um, I think it turned out really pretty the type of scrapbook paper you choose is up to you I chose a paper that is a card stock weight and um, so whatever scrapbook paper you choose um, 
you know, I wouldn't use a really thin one because it is going to be your cover. I'm going to set those aside. They're not upside down. This piece was from an old Tim Holtz pad that I had, one little piece left. Um, the one I'm using today is completely different. Um, the colors are not exactly, you know, to fit, but I think they're going to be fine. We're going to see a little bit of it perhaps, but I just want to show you, you really can use any, any kind of cardstock weight. This one isn't super thick, but scrapbook paper. So again, cut off a three inch strip so that yours now measures 12 by nine, and then fold it in half. Now, for my original one, I decided to line it to just give it a little more, um, I guess, durability with a piece of fabric. This is kind of a linen fabric that I got as a, in a consign, art craft consignment shop. You can use um, an old piece of a sheet. You could use a pillowcase. You could use any, any fabric you want. It can be plain like mine. It could be patterned. Whatever you think would look good. You can skip this step if you want to, um, but I like it. I think it gives my journal a little more, uh, like I said, durability. Now on the one that I showed you guys, I, and I'm gonna show you, we're gonna layer some pages from the kit that I printed on um, a cardstock weight, a 90 pound cardstock to also give it more structure. Okay, I also then stitched on my sewing machine. I have not figured out how to film myself sewing on my sewing machine, so we're not gonna be doing that today. And um, just know that if you would like to do that, I can, I'll tell you at what point you might want to. Because I'm using this piece of fabric onto my paper, I am using a Fabrifix glue so that you can glue paper to paper, you can glue fabric to paper, fabric to fabric, um, like ribbons, lace, those types of things to paper or to fabric. So it's a great glue to have. Sometimes it does show through when you, you glue it. You can kind of see here perhaps a little bit of discoloration. That doesn't bother me if it bothers you. Again, maybe layering then paper over it. And we're gonna layer a, a larger piece of paper over this one. So I'm not gonna worry too much about it, but I'm not gonna go right to the edge. I am going to leave it a little bit loose on the edges. Again, personal preference, but I am gonna put some nice glue down and smooth it out some. And um, again, this is gonna get sandwiched in. It's not gonna go anywhere, even though I'm not gonna stitch this one. So I'm not worried about it. All right. I have a old gift card and I'm just gonna use it to help spread that Fabrifix glue out. You don't wanna be scraping it all off by any means but just kind of spread it around so it's not just the blob. <laughs> okay, I think that will be all right. And I'm gonna flip it over. Mine is not cut at a perfect rectangle. Again, I that doesn't bother me. And um, I like uh, it being not perfect. It's part of the junk journal charm, in my opinion. But if that bothers you, you can, you know, really measure and cut yours more carefully than I did. All right. Now, again, this is, I've already folded mine in half. So there's that crease, but everything's looking good. Now, I went ahead and printed a few of the pages that I like. I liked this tree. And then I really liked this one, too. I mean, I like a lot of them. The, for the cover of the original one, I chose that page. Um, but I'm going to pick one of these to be my cover. And I'm probably going to choose one to 
I don't know, maybe be my back cover or one of my inside covers. So I don't wanna be gluing this together closed, but you're gonna see how it's gonna look. I am gonna ink this and I may put some lace or something on here as well. I think I'm gonna use this one for the front cover. I haven't, I didn't ink or anything offline. We're gonna do everything together. So I like to ink mine up. So I'm gonna do that really quick. And then I'm gonna set this one aside because we're gonna do the outside cover after I finish layering paper on the inside. <laughs> because like I said, I don't wanna inadvertently glue my cover together. So then I cut, I printed them and I don't know if this is the one that came with it, but right, the page was like this and I then cut it in half at five and a half. This was printed on eight and a half by 11 paper. So then I have several of the sheets that are just um, with the lines on them. And for the inside covers, I had kind of thought that would be nice, but I'm also thinking I may use this, like when you open it up, you get to see another great tree. Now I do want to keep in mind where my fold line is so that um, the crease line, so that I can get this centered in here. Now I literally just cut an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper in half. So it is five and a half by eight and a half. And this journal is nine inches tall and then each half is six inches wide, so it fits in there great. I wanna see a little more of my fabric. So I am going to, on the bottom, just take off, I'm gonna start with taking off a half an inch. So this is now going to measure five and a half by eight, and I like that a little bit better. I wanted to see it. So for my back inside cover, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take off a half an inch so that they match. Just like that. And this one I can decide which way I want to turn it. I think I'm going to turn it that way. Now I want both of these inked and then we are going to glue them to the inside front covers with the Fabrifix glue. If you would like to see some of the supplies that I use, I do have an Amazon storefront. Um, it's in affiliate links, but you can go there. It's in the description and see some of the supplies that I use from ink, paper, glue, adhesives, those types of things. Um, and other things that I just, you know, like that are related to paper crafting and junk journaling. If you do make a purchase, Amazon does give me a few pennies. Um, it's not a lot, but it's at no cost to you. And every little bit helps. So thank you for clicking on my links and looking at my shop. Okay. But no pressure. Don't need to do that at all. All right. So now, again, I just don't want to lose. And it's hard, it's hard for me to see on this fabric where I folded my, paint, my journal cover in half. And it's a little soft right now because of all the glue. I'm going to ink just so that we can all see what we're doing. There we go. I don't want to accidentally put, glue my page down over the um, center line. All right, so again, I can decide do I want to make this not quite five and a half inches wide, but I, I'm okay with it. I'm going to just, we're just going to glue it down. You can decide on yours how much, um, you know, what size you want yours to be and what looks good to your eyes. That's one of the things I love about this type of, you know, some of the projects that I share with you, some of the One Page Wonders things we do have to measure and um, we have to pay attention to where we crease things and stuff like that. But this, you know, start off with your nine by 12 piece of paper, fold it in half, and then this you can kind of play around with. Just keep checking, checking to make sure that's folding up nicely. Now this is the piece that I'm gonna use for the back cover, and I'm just gonna pay attention to try to line it up the best I can. 
And again, I'm using the Fabrifix glue because I am gluing paper to fabric. And there's other brands of the Fabrifix glue. I think like if you, you know, go to different stores, I'm, I'm not quite sure. I think Eileen's has one. So, you know, play with it and see what works for you. I do think putting it in these dispenser bottles really has helped me. Okay. But again, not everybody uses those and that's okay too. All right. Looking for my bone folder. Come on, trusty bone folder. Barely gotten started today and I'm already losing things. All right. Fun, fun. Okay. This needs a touch of glue. It keeps kind of, I don't know, bobbling up on me. So I'm gonna just put some glue there. All right, I am happy with that. Um, now on my original one, I was gonna show you really quick. I didn't even put a piece of paper on this side. I just left the fabric. And of course there was the stitching from where I uh, sewed this piece on. And then this piece, I sewed a piece on the back that was, was even more narrow because I wanted to see those bugs. It was the mood I was in that day. I wanted to, to see the bugs. And then I put a narrow strip. I just cut it to fit within the stitching on the back. So the back is nice and thick. The front is not quite as thick, but it still has plenty. It's pl plenty sturdy enough. Okay. Now, if you're going to sew, I... I would have suggested that you pick out your front cover pieces and then just use a little bit of just wet white glue or a little bit of tape or something and just kind of centered it where you wanted it on your front cover. And then get your piece of material and use some adhesive to hold it in place. And then I would have gone ahead and sewn around the front so that your top stitches, your pretty stitches are on the outside of your cover. And then you could decide like I did on this one, if you wanna do something a little different depending on where your stitches ended up. I hope that makes sense. But you know, the, the stitching really is optional. And if you, um, so, so you know, if you've never sewn on paper, you can sew on paper just like you can fabric, but um, I, I like it and I like the look, but again, for the video purposes, we're not gonna do that today. All right, this is dry enough, so now I am going to flip this over and we are going to glue down the piece that I chose for the front. And now I'm just gonna use, you, you could stay with the Fabrifix glue if you want to, it won't hurt anything. I'm just gonna use my PVA Line Co. brand wet white glue. Use whatever adhesive you like. I definitely have my favorites. Okay. Here we go. And I'm going to go a little bit off center, just touch, because I'm thinking about putting a piece of lace or ribbon or something on the edge. And these little strings. Um, are starting to hang off. If they bother you, of course, just snip them. They kind of don't bother me, but I, I kind of like that it's starting to fray some. I don't want it to fray too much. If I need to, I will add my um, fray check to it if I think it's really coming apart too much, but I think I'm okay right now. I sort of like, like it to fray some. All right, now it feels really good. It's starting to get nice and sturdy. We're gonna go to the back, and I haven't selected a piece for the back yet, so we're just gonna go with this one. You could put another one of the, another of the printed trees back here. That would be pretty. And on the original one, I didn't do a lot of decorating to the cover of the journal. I just really liked seeing the tree, and I did like the stitching. Since I don't have stitching on this one, like I said, I may do a piece of ribbon, a piece of lace. Um, you know, there's the sky's the limit. The sky is the limit. 
Okay. Here we go. So the, the gratitude um, journal kit on Etsy has definitely been my most popular <laughs> digital paper kit so far. Thank you guys, those of you who, who have purchased it. I hope you're enjoying it. Um, it was exciting for me to see that you guys had, had such an interest in gratitude journaling like I do. So it's kind of fun. All right, now this is where I probably want it to stop fraying too much because I'm getting really close to the edge of that paper, which I think will make it stop anyway because of the fabrifics. So we'll see. All right, so now the next step, I haven't inked all around this yet. And um, ugh. I think it, it definitely, again, I like that. I like having the inked edges, but I can do more of that later. And I can also take some of the other little pieces from the kit if I want to and decorate the front some. All right, now we're going to sew in some signatures, or the signature, we have one. We're gonna sew in one signature. So let me close all my glue up first. So. Where did my little, I don't know, you guys are probably seeing it and going, Pam, it's right there. We'll just use this pen for right now to close up this bottle of glue and I'll find the other stopper later. Okay, we want to fold these papers into a signature. Now, when you're doing a single signature, right, um, you just get all your pages together. And this one, I'm just using pages from the kit. I'm not using like other random papers like coffee dyed paper or book pages or anything like that. I'm just um, using the papers from the kit. But I normally fold each page one at a time. Now, I just picked up a clump. <laughs> And did a clump there together so that you're not sitting here watching me fold 15 pieces of paper. But, um, you know, I try to be as neat as I can, even when I'm using the random sizes, which is fun, you know, to kind of have all those different elements to explore when you open up a journal. But then depending on how, you know, I choose to use this one or whoever owns it chooses to use it, you can always add... Um, by using some of those strategies I've been going over in some of my videos, you know, how to like extend a page or a fold out or a flip, and of course, lots of pockets and tuck spots. So there's plenty of options um, moving forward. But I do try when I'm putting the signatures together to just sort of flip through and see how the pages are looking together. And since this kit coordinates, we're, we're doing pretty well, but what I was hoping is when possible, and it will always be possible, but when possible, have um, on each two-page spread, like when this gets sewn in, you'll have a page for writing and something pretty to look at. Um, but if that doesn't matter to you, don't, don't even worry about that. Like this one, I use it, we'll have two writing pages. And then let's see, when I stick this one in there, we will have a writing page and a floral. And then you can also, just because I folded it this way, doesn't mean it can't be folded back this way, right? So we have, we have just, we have options. So we're going to do that one, and I'm just getting to the point where I'm not going to worry about it too much, so we can move on. But get the pages in whatever order you want. You certainly, I, I would say, not want any of them to be upside down. That's probably your most important factor here, right? I wanted that. I did want that tree to be in the middle, though. <laughs> okay. So get all of your pages. Now I'd already folded them in half, but now I need to kind of refold, make sure everybody's getting along and happy together. Now what you're gonna see is what naturally occurs is that when we fold them in half and then stack them together, 
the, um, the ones that are closest to the center, to the middle, they're gonna stick out further even though the paper is the exact same size because of that fold, that crease. If you don't want yours to do that, you can trim them off. I did not bother to trim mine off and I think it looks just fine. I, I don't think you really notice. I did go around and ink all my edges because again, I like that look. Um, we won't do all of that on camera. I can do that off camera after it's um, after the journal is bound together. But I think it looked fine. But this is your chance. If you're like, oh, that kind of bothers me, take out like two, take a sliver off, put them in, see how it's looking, and then maybe take one or two right before that, and just kind of adjust and so that they all stack together. I caution you not to put this in your paper trimmer and attempt to just chop all of that off. Um, I never have success at doing that. Do a couple at a time is my suggestion. Okay. Oh, look. I knew it was going to pop up. All right. The pin works to stop these, but I feel like, I don't know, I feel like the glue lasts a little longer if I do that way, but I go through a lot of glue really fast. So those are the little stoppers that come with the bottles. All right, so I have my signature the way I want it. I'm gonna use two paper clips to hold it together. And we are going to do, um, we're gonna poke the holes and then we're gonna do the simple, simple three pamphlet stitch, which is my go-to stitch. And I just realized I want to clip this to the cover as well. I don't, I want the whole thing clipped together. So I'm just gonna get out a couple more paper clips. I'm not gonna fuss with it. There we go. All right, and again, fold it, make sure everything looks the way you want it and you're happy with it. I just wanna make sure the center crease line is staying with that back crease line and everything matches up nice. Ruler, and then you need some kind of piercing tool. This is the one that I like, but there's the all more ones that looks a little bit more like an, an all that kind of thing. And yet again, I did not ink this for y'all. I'm just going to draw on there with my brown pen because I don't want to undo this. If I had inked this for you, you would be able to see what I was doing, but the line will work too. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Um, you got a couple of options. This is eight and a half, and I wanna go to the middle, right? And so four and a quarter is half of eight and a half. I can also put my ruler to the edge of the cover, which is nine inches, correct? So the middle point is four and a half. So find the center point, and you're not gonna be able to go all the way through, maybe if you're using an awl and you really dig in there, but I just get a good, where I can go back and find the little prick I just made. And then I usually, depending on the size of the journal, you know, um, I'll come down an inch, I'll come down an inch and a half, two inches, it just kind of depends. So on this one, I'm gonna do an inch and a half from the bottom and an inch and a half from the top. So that's one, four and a half, and seven and a half. Didn't want to misspeak. All right, so three holes is what we need. Now I'm going to be able to see those pricks that I made, but now I'm, I'm just pushing it all the way through. And this is pretty thick. It's 15 pieces of paper plus the cover and the fabric. And it went right through, which is what I wanted the score line on the cover. So if you just try to keep everything lined up the best you can, and hopefully you won't be off. If you are, it's a junk journal, it'll be okay. And what I mean by off is if you're just off of that crease by just a little bit, it's okay. I'm off just a touch and it's fine. Okay, so now I have three holes. And like I said, they were a little, I really had to use a little bit of strength to get that three, but it is okay. All right, now I'm gonna use a waxed thread. Again, I get this on Amazon. Um, in brown, there's different colors. And I 
trim my thread to be three times the height of the pages. So I just kind of hold it on there. And I, I mean, I know that's eight and a half inches. And then I do another eight and a half and another eight and a half. That's how I do it. <laughs> and, and it's an approximate thing. They're always longer than what they need to be. And that's fun. Now, if you've watched some of my other videos on how to make journals and bind journals where I've demonstrated this, normally I, when I bind a journal together, goodness, Got to thread your needle. Um, I start on the inside. And let me show you if you start on the inside. If you, this one has one, two, three, four, five signatures, right? If you start on the inside, your stitch, your strings, the ends of your strings are on the inside of each of those signatures. So when you go to the outside of the spine, it's just the sewing. There's, there's no strings hanging off, okay? If you start from the outside and come in, you will make your tie for your journal on the outside. And I did that for this one because I knew I wanted to add some beads. Okay, now I also shared with you guys, I wish I had waited to add the beads until I was a little further along. These are not removable and it was a little annoying, I'll be honest. Um, so that, you know, completely up to you. There's other kinds of dangles you could put on there that may not um, hinder you as much, but it just, again, think through that. You can also do some type of removable if you want some kind of jewelry for your journal. <laughs> Um, do a clip or something removable. Okay, I'm going to do it with the tie on the outside just because that's how I did the, the one that I showed y'all originally. So in the center hole on the outside, you're going to take your threaded needle and I use my, my craft mat to help me. I don't have the best hand strength and work on getting this needle through those holes. Now, this one, I've been wiggling around. There's this piece of fabric. I'm just not really even quite sure what all's going on here. It should stay lined up for you, but okay. I just had to wiggle it just a touch and it found the hole. This is where I use the mat to help push that needle through. The head of the needle, the eye of the needle is a little wider, of course, than the tip. So that, that's what I mean by helping push it through. I don't have to have the all that hand strength. You don't want to pull your tail through. You haven't, you're not, don't knot it. You don't need to knot it. You just need to make sure you don't pull it all the way through. All right, now I am going to go down through the bottom hole. Again, mine went right through with no problem that time. And I'm going to push it through. All right, paying attention to my tail. Now, I am going to skip the center hole. I'm gonna to go to the top hole. And again, just kind of play with it and hope it comes up through. If not, you can kind of look, peek underneath and see how you're doing. There it goes. And again, I'm using my mat to help push the needle through. Now, I do not wanna lose my tail. There it is, we're doing good. Everything is lining up nicely. And now we are going to go back through the center hole and come out on the outside. Okay. And now you don't need your needle anymore. Now what you do have to do though, is you have to make sure these two tails you now have, um, mine went through the thread just a touch. Um, one, you have one on either side of this string, so I'm kind of exaggerating mine to show you guys what I mean. You want one to the left and one to the right underneath. You don't want both, you know, on one side and that you've just kind of pulled it over. Make sure they're either side underneath that string. Double check everything looks nice inside. It looks great. And then we're going to tie it three times. I do one two, and then I switch hands, meaning I pick up this one with my left hand, this one with my right hand, and I just tie one more knot. And that's it. Now, since, see how long it is? Um, that's why it's not an exact science. I'm going to leave these long because 
I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them just yet. Okay, so I'm just going to leave them there. I have options if I don't cut them too short. If you don't want to do anything with them, maybe put them on the inside. Uh, you could tie a bow. If you're worried about this knot, you really, really have to work to get this knot undone, like with a needle and it's really hard. You could put a touch of glue. If you use some floss, like embroidery floss, and you're worried about it coming undone, again, put a touch of glue there and just let it dry. It'll be fine. Um, whether it's on the inside or the outside. Again, um, Sometimes even just adding some more threads and strings and stuff would be pretty here. So again, I'm just leaving it until I give that some thought. Now we're going to go back to the inside. And I do this with every journal I make. I just turn each page, either with my finger or with my bone folder, and I just make sure everything is looking the way I want it to. Um... and gets a nice crease. It's that kind of chance for me to just make sure I didn't put anything in upside down to make sure all the papers are happy together. Um, I didn't somehow miss, miss stitching a page in somehow because if I have to, I can cut that thread off and do it all over again and I'd rather know now then later when I'm using my journal or starting to really decorate it and maybe I've added a bunch of things already and then it's just much more difficult to re-sew the signature. Okay, so I do it on both sides. I do all those pages and I go back to the center and I come back this way and really just flatten them out and make sure everything looks good. All right, so I have quite a few videos that demonstrate this technique. If you are um, looking for some videos where there's multiple signatures, I have those as well. So, you know, you can search um, any YouTube channel. You can go to the channel page and there's a little magnifying glass and you can like if you want to look at my one page wonders or, or different things, different tutorials. I also try to sort them into playlists for you guys. But I do not mind um, showing you guys techniques. I love when you make requests and I try to honor those um, and do the best that I can. But I hope this helps you. Now if you go back and I'll make sure to link this video for you. And I think I've learned how to do those little info cards where you can click to. But the, the video where I made the pockets and started decorating this one, if that's your next step and you haven't seen that one yet, I'll make sure it's easy for you to find, okay? Um, again, they look a touch different. Stitching, no stitching. Um, and this one's already a little bit chunkier because it already has some pretty treasures in there. And this one's still pretty thin. Okay. Please let me know what you think. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I'd love to have you join me on this journey. Thanks, everybody. Until next time, have a great day.